Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play cast. We're recording on Tuesday, February 9th. You'll be watching it on Thursday, February 11th, or later, depending on your schedule. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, your host from MMOBomb.com. This is episode 169. We've got a lot of news to cover and a lot of bombs and feedback to get to, so we're going to get right to it after we introduce Domino. Uh, Q. Q. I mean, Q. Domino is doing the hosting, or yeah. Domino He's is the only reason people watch. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, I mean, I'm not even going to try to impugn Domino's talent. It's, <laughs> what is, do, what is Domino staring at? <laughs> there's something over there that that cat just does not like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jason Winter. What's up, sir? I don't have a cat. No. Sorry. You're missing no. out. I do. On allergies, but, yeah. But, uh, it's, <laughs> Her name is Whiskers. It was named by my daughter, who was three or four at the time. But she is the most skittish, skittish cat ever, so I have no idea where she's at right now. She might be under the stairs that are behind me. She's the cat under the stairs. I have no idea. All right, let's get over and get started with the news. <laughs> enough cats. The Internet has enough of that. All right, before we get to the uh, news today, got some breaking type news. We don't have really you know, a lot to say about it besides, obviously, our condolences and uh, a longtime mainstay in the video game online reporting realm, particularly trailers. Game trailers shuts down today, kind of unexpectedly, even to all the staff there who just kind of got the news all at once. Uh, our condolences to all of those, uh, all of our friends there, and hope that they rebound and, and get offered positions very quickly. But what were your initial thoughts? I, I wasn't, I know this might seem bad to say, but I wasn't surprised by the actual site shutting down just because of the model that it's had for over a decade now. I mean, it kind of introduced the whole idea of a location for video format video game reporting. But that's since been taken over by so many outlets, including sites like our own, that it, it was kind of hard to find a niche again there. Um, I wasn't surprised by the news. I was surprised by the way it went down, though. I hate that whole shutdown out of nowhere, and nobody knew about it until the day they came in. What were what were your takes on it, Jason? I mean, it's kind of like you said, though. I mean, I, I don't even remember the last time I looked at something on game trailers. I probably looked at YouTube videos of their stuff. And Without just, realizing uh, it was game trailers. Yeah, no stuff. idea who it is. You know, so yeah, I mean, on that level, yeah, I agree with you that there's just so many other places that offer the same kind of thing that I could see why it just wouldn't have you know, would have reached some point where it just couldn't be sustained anymore. Q. I don't remember when the last time I even looked at game trailers was. Oh man, you guys are <laughs> brutal. <laughs> But I mean, because it, it's part of the thing too. Not not even like counting sites like ours or other, you know, just general news sites. But how many video game companies just throw up their own trailers and stuff now? Anyway, like that's where I go if I want to look at a trailer for a game. I just go directly to the company's YouTube channel. Yeah, and and it was kind of the whole YouTube and Twitch generations that came three and a few more years, respectively, after game trailers launched that that kind of did it in for the model. I'm really sad to see it go. I love a, a lot of their their uh, original content, like when they start breaking down the game trailers and there's some, of course, their E3 coverage. I mean, you guys have to remember, you know, game trailers being one of the place uh, places to go in addition to G4 at the time. There's a see, throwback. That, that, that's, that's the thing, again, is it's like, yeah, I watched E3 coverage from somebody. Yeah. Oh man, you guys are I brutal. E I, I mean, the last time I watched E3 coverage, I think it was on Twitch. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And again, and then you're saying all the things that kind of made me not surprised that it shut down, but surprised that it was out of the blue like that. I, I mean, I've got to believe that there was financial. In 2014, the site was bought out, and there were layoffs right away. Then there were layoffs later. So I mean, there's financial analysis there that they had to have had. Uh, so for it to be a surprise, I just I, for the employees, I think that's incredibly unfair, and we obviously wish them all the best. I think there's something to be said for privately owned sites like, like MMO Bomb. I mean, there's a a, a cap where you know, and, and there's a ton of us, right? I and mean, we're not the only one out there by any stretch of the imagination. But there, there's a. It, it, do you think the industry as a whole? supports any of those big game sites anymore. I mean, think about it. We saw massively uh, 
disappear and, and luckily reappear in a different format based on the, the team that was behind the site wanting to continue their vision. We've seen game trailers. We've seen other sites have issues as far as staffing and viability uh, of the big company model. But literally sites like ours doing well and holding their own because they're smaller and they're okay with not making seven million dollars a year because they're they're one person is there a market for that big big video game site anymore well there only is as long as it can keep going because I, I you know i experienced the same kind of thing when i worked for for fnw publications back when they you know they're a big sports collectible place and i worked there for the collectible card game magazine when, when pokemon was at its height and when i started going down they look at it and say well it's not doing as well anymore we're going to get rid of it. The same thing at Beckett. And when MMOs were at their height, that's when they produced their MMO magazine, and I got into that kind of late. And when that hit a downturn, they said, well, it doesn't... They, they, just, they do stuff like this that doesn't fit their core business, but it's making money right now. But as soon as it starts going down, and they feel like it doesn't make money and it's not part of their core business, they get rid of it. That's probably the same thing with uh, with AOL. You know, When they you know, bought massively... MMOs were huge. They started coming down some, and they said, "Well, you know, it's not part of our core business, so we're going to get rid of it." And that's the thing: is when they buy stuff like that, when it's at its peak, if it doesn't stick around at that peak, they're going to look at it. They're going to look at the financials of it and say, "Well, it's not really worth it anymore." So, it's a weird cycle, though, too, right? Because you had like, um, was it, uh, when Ger Jeff Gersman left uh, Gamespot. And they went and started Whiskey Media and you know Giant Bomb and all of that, and then how many years later you suddenly end up having Whiskey Media being broken up and Giant Bomb being owned by Gamespot? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, a weird reversal. A circle. Yeah, what do you do? You ever think about this? And this is off, maybe a little bit off topic, but if you think about where game trailers started, it was the place initially to go for the latest game trailers. It was just that simple. You, there was no YouTube yet. Nobody was streaming stuff yet, so they grabbed a monopoly on. Hey, send us your trailers. You'll hit a very, very big audience, and away they went. Do you ever do you ever think about like in this day and age what the next big media uh, consumption point is i mean besides if Veep, i did we'd be doing it on that mobile right i mean <laughs> the, the next big thing obviously on the horizon is vr and okay that really doesn't do much for the media consumption portion until you start getting now you can sit and watch the free to play cast like you're on the panel i i don't know what does the free to play <laughs> cast vr look like uh but I just don't see the next thing. It was like, okay, we have widespread distribution of video. We have widespread distribution of audio to the point that three people sitting in their house can do a podcast like this in a, uh, in a decent quality to high quality to even expert quality in some cases uh, method. What is the next thing that in the game industry a site could latch onto and become the destination for something? Because even myself, I, who I, I focus predominantly on MMO news, although I collect and play video games of all genres and all platforms, uh, I focus on MMO news. I get pressers from everybody for MMO bomb, and there's at least seven or eight different conglomerate sites that I visit, not even counting the individual game sites. There is no one stop for me. And, and I'm the primary consumer of this type of content, and I don't know what it would take to get me to be, for you to make your site my one-stop shop. I would love if our viewers only came to MMO bomb for information. I realize that's unrealistic unreal because even we don't do that uh, because there's things that you miss out. I just don't know where the next big destination, particularly this genre, is going to come from. I mean, my one-stop shop for all my gaming news is Twitter, so... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I just follow everybody that I care about hearing from on Twitter, and then I, you know... I, I mean, I have Feedly and stuff like that, which obviously pulls in from every other gaming site that exists as well as the the you know like blizzards you know actual website and stuff like that but i mean i don't there's not there's not a site that i go to and spend time on like i'll just flip through twitter and go oh there's there's an interesting bit of news that's worth looking at and go to the site for you know 10 seconds or whatever and then leave I mean, it just feels like, Jason, you make a site dedicated to one game and hope the audience and your content is good enough to attract a big portion of that very niche 
piece of the pie you've just pulled by isolating yourself to one game, or you open yourself up to all games, but then you, you can't possibly cover all things. Even with the three of us doing the, the news articles and Zach occasionally chiming in, we just can't cover every single thing. We're going to miss something and see it somewhere else and go, oh shit, all right, we missed that, let's go ahead and cover it. Uh, I think those are your only two options in the, the video game media world at this point. Well, you do try to, I think you kind of try to find the middle ground of carving out your little niche within that, like say, hey, just free to play game online, right. on, free to play online PC games. We don't cover, you know, Bejeweled or Clash of Clans or anything like that. So we, we have that to be our little special thing. Someone else might have, you know, a Korean RPG. You know, Step Aru has a lot of that sort of stuff. They tend to really get into that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, away. that's so, a yeah. great example of a little yeah. niche that's carved out nicely as Step Aru. Or the other sites like Massively RPG covering pretty much just straight up MMORPG. So yeah, that's what you have to do. You have to be broad enough. I mean, you can't. A few people, can, if they're really good, they can have just a Warcraft site or a or a whatever a Rift site or whatever. You might do really well with that, but probably you need to branch out at least a little more than that to get. But still within some very easily defined uh, you know genre. Well, our condolences to everybody at Game Trailers. Hope you get back uh, reporting there real soon and making some of the, uh, the video content that out of the three of us, I'm apparently the only one that watches. Uh, moving on, Bless Online. I haven't talked about them recently. Uh, Zach Sharps did a, a nice first look that's on the website there if you haven't seen it with uh, on the Korean servers. Uh, they're finally in final talks with Western publishers. Now you think that would be a, oh, okay, awesome. So now we just need release dates and everything. We don't have any of that. <laughs> we don't have release dates. We don't even have who the talks, uh, although they're final talks, according to the press release, final talks would imply that maybe there's two companies left bidding. You know, we're almost done, but we don't even get a clue as to that. So we don't know who the publishers are. We don't know when the Western release uh, in Europe and North America is even going to happen yet. So I want to get your guys' thoughts on the game itself real quickly, if you haven't uh, had a chance to check it out or, or speak to it a little bit, and how you think it's going to do in the West first, and then we'll tackle the publisher thing after that. Go ahead, Q. Um, I mean, as far as how it's going to do, I, it's, it's pretty much like any other Asian-based MMO, it's definitely going to have its audience, uh, you know, if, out of Western, you know, players. But it, I, it, it's one of those things where I, I kind of expect any MMO to have like max 200k players overall, just because that's kind of like a nice, easy number. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't see it being like the biggest thing ever or anything like that. Jason? Yeah, I, I actually went out because I hadn't really looked into Bless really heavily mm -hmm. for a while. So I went ahead and I looked at some older stuff, looked at some interviews, looked at some people talking on Reddit about it. And man, does this just sound like another, like like she said, sort of says, it's just another big Korean game that everyone's excited about. But when you actually start looking at it, oh my God. Mm -hmm. uh, the interviews they talk about, they talk a lot about how they want to reduce repetitive content, but they don't explain how. But, but don't worry, we're going to do it for sure. They have a big emphasis on lore and story. They really want to you know, work that into it. But that's all going to be ignored so players can grind out the best gear. We know how it actually goes. Uh, some, one video I saw, someone said it had a fatigue system worse than Arch Ages. Arch Ages. Yeah. And they also have open world PvP, which might be forced. It might be like you're on a PvP server. I couldn't quite guarantee that, but they do have open world PvP with a cash shop item that makes you unkillable in PvP for 10 minutes, which maybe means that you it's just like you're on a PvE server, so you can't attack anybody either. That also I couldn't confirm, but yeah, I, I'm just not seeing anything that's going to make me want to actually play this game. Timeline-wise, time it's uh, pretty obvious that most people are going to make comparisons between, and even style-wise in some respects, between uh, Bless Online and Black Desert Online, which of course that game is going to go buy to play here in the West, not free to play like its Eastern counterparts. Um, to be honest though, personally, I'm probably looking forward to Bless Online more than Black Desert. That's not because I have a personal preference as far as, oh, I think this game's going to be better, 
uh, Black Desert Online does the the whole PvP thing, does the whole open sandbox world type thing, and Bless Online is more theme park and, and like you mentioned, Jason, lore and story and and I'm sorry, I'm a PVE Care Bear. That just means that I think globally that game will appeal to me a little more. I'll play both, of course, and who knows, I could be dead wrong by the end of actually playing it. But just on paper, I think Bless appeals to me a little bit more. Uh, Q, you and I have spent hours and hours in games like Rift and everything. We've never once actually PvP'd. I, I got to think you're on the same you're on the same uh, train of thought here as I am. Actually, no, I do PvP. Oh, <laughs> I, I apologize. You're the only character on the panel. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I do PvP, so I'm I'm not. I, I'm not necessarily great at it. I, I'm more. I consider myself more of a meat shield. I just throw myself <laughs> at stuff, and you know, I'm the expendable one usually. Um, I, I actually was uh, PvPing with some friends in Ion at one point and got killed by my roommate's mother coming in and insisting on meeting me. So <laughs> my entire, entire group wiped because she had to meet me right then and couldn't wait. <laughs> Jason, uh, do you have a preference one over the other? Honestly, just because I haven't looked up Black just Desert. Just on paper? Now, because now I haven't looked up Black Desert recently. And I've seen all the stuff about Bless. I'm more in favor of Black Desert. Until I research that and find stuff <laughs> I'll hate about that. So. I'm sure they'll both have terrible inventory and you'll hate them both at oh, that yeah, point. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so the big question then is, what publisher do you hope picks this up? Initially, uh, two years ago, before Arc Age, before the Rift changes, before Trove, I might have said Try On Worlds. I probably would have st still had a few reservations at that point, but I probably would have said Try On Worlds. But now I've seen the snafus with Arc Age. I've seen the Rift and Trove choices. I've even seen Davillion Online have some launch woes that were a little uh, more expected or a little more unexpected than you would normally expect to see during a launch cycle. So I, I got to say to me no on the try on worlds front. And I don't know who that really leaves that I would be like yes. I don't think there's any company that I'm just like yes, that's the company. Don't give it to anybody but them. It's just kind of which of the least evil do I think <laughs> would do the best with this one? I mean, it's probably going to wind up being the same way as Arcade. If, if any of the stuff that I'm looking at is, you know, legitimate and how they're going to implement it in the West, they're just going to do that. It's going to be the same sort of, you know, whatever company gets the publishing rights can be like, well, this is what they told us we have to do. Sorry. I know it sucks, but, you know, we're counting our checks. We've got our, we're burning our $100 bills, but we're sorry. Sorry we have a bad cash shop. So it's probably going to be the same thing unless, I mean, unless it's a company that can just impose its will on them. You know, some, but it have to be someone like, like Blizzard or someone, you know, someone just really huge like that. And that's not going to happen. So, if it's Perfect World or Daybreak or Tryon or whatever, th they're going to take whatever terms they're given. Probably. Yeah, I, I can't I wasn't see. Even thinking Daybreak. Yeah, I can't see Daybreak yeah, even well, in sure. the conversation. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to them later. What do you think, you? I, I mean, I kind of like, like you said, Tryon try would obviously not not be the one to go for, but there aren't that many where I think, oh, these people are going to publish a, a Korean game. It's pretty much NCSoft or ArenaNet are like the two that I'm like, okay, these are the companies that are going to publish this, one or the other. It's not even a, a which one do I think should do it. It's just. Did, did you mean ArenaNet there? Uh, yeah, what did I say? You said ArenaNet. I'm not sure. I, I can't see ArenaNet publishing. But it, it's just kind of, there aren't that many companies that pick up Korean games to begin with. Here's the interesting thing. Like, you mentioned NCSoft. Obviously, I think they probably talked at least at some point to see if it was uh, going to be good for their portfolio. Still waiting on those damn financials, speaking of that. Yeah. Although we've seen the Wildstar state of the game address, so we'll see how much that syncs up with the with the financials when it comes out. I got to think NCSoft's a player. I got to think Perfect World is probably a player at some point. I got to think Nexon might have been a player or could still be a player. Those are the three that I think would, would latch on to it pretty quickly. The one other intriguing option that I did see out there was Dom Games. Yeah. which is the publisher creator of Black Desert Online, which might be a little interesting way to just scoop up 
the theme park crowd and the PvP crowd in, in two different games under the same banner. That one I find intriguing. Um, however, they just took their own game by to play over here, so what does that mean for Bless when it comes over here? Because we still don't know the model that it would adopt over here anyway. So Right, I was going to say, I thought when I looked at it last, they said that they didn't know what the model was. Although thinking about it, I mean, it's not like it's it's an unprecedented thing, sort of, with, you know, like with Tencent, right? You have Tencent who, well, now owns Riot, but also has money invested in high-res and God knows what other companies, right? But they, they have these competing games in the same area on their portfolio, so it's not like it would be unprecedented for, you know, a company to just be like, all right, we'll just take all of this. Yeah, I, I find that one intriguing, even though I think it leans uh, more towards Bless Online being buy-to-play at that point. Moving on to Jason's uh, company, Daybreak Games, who I can't even imagine would be in the talks to publish Bless Online. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and and I, I will talk about YouTube here in a minute. Uh, H1Z1, y yeah. Um, if you didn't watch Free to Play Police Episode 2, go watch it. It's a good eight minutes uh, of your life that, that you'll be happy you did. Um, if you don't know what happened here... H1Z1, out of the blue, got announced that not only was the game being split into two different games, one essentially being the Battle Royale portion and the other being the Survival portion, King of the Kill and what's the other one called? Just Survive. Just Survive, thank you. Terrible names, by the way, both of them. Um, like H1Z1 was any better. Yeah. <laughs> well, they kept the <laughs> H1Z1, too. I mean, it wasn't the worst game name ever. There is still Warface. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so they split the game into two games. They're going to be doing it on February 17th. Each game will then sell for 19.99. No no discount because it's they're taking one broken game and making it two broken games. Uh, so no discount there and totally abandoning at least at this point, totally abandoning is all these asterisks. <laughs> um, <laughs> A totally abandoning a free-to-play model, and somebody on YouTube got upset with us, uh, Jason, because during the free-to-play police, we said this has been free-to-play since it was Sony Online Entertainment, and since they first started talking about it, and even after it became Daybreak, it continued to be free-to-play, and so they said, well, Daybreak's a different company, and you know, and my point was, yeah, okay, fine, it's a different company, but here is a link to the Steam page last month. And they became Daybreak a year ago. For the last year, they too have been advertising this game as free to play. It wasn't just a Sony Online thing that when it became Daybreak, they kind of hid that marketing and said, we'll do what we want to. They've been advertising it themselves as free to play. Not the case anymore. Totally terrible decision PR wise for me. An awful, awful PR nightmare in my mind. Even though I think maybe the change could be better for the game, but they gotta fix the damn games first. They're a mess, Jason. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played much over the past few months, just hopping in every now and then, so I haven't seen any really horrible things. I guess there are still, I mean, I'll still get on, I'll still see about uh, hackers getting banned and whatever, so I guess that's working all right even though apparently they're still getting into the games and finding stuff to hack, so... Yeah, I mean, it's not so much that they're bad and buggy and everything, they just they just haven't been adding the features. They haven't been making... It seems that way. They haven't really been adding the stuff to really make it... A lot of the stuff that they used to promise. Hey, that like, Screamer like, Zombie's coming. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, the Screamer Zombies are back in, supposedly, soon, which were on the agenda to be in last July. That's what was on their roadmap. They had a date for it and everything. And that's what they talked about in that interview with MORPG about how, oh, this is new content we're going to add that we promised you know seven or eight months ago but so yeah i mean they just need to they just need to put stuff in <laughs> I, I don't know q your thoughts <laughs> q i remember q and skype her comment was you know what i like buy to play games and this is a terrible decision <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, uh, I actually prefer buy to play over over free to play most of the time because uh, you pretty much know exactly what you're going to be getting, uh, and I kind of like the little bit of the gate there too that the buy to play puts up. But it's just, 
like the the entire sudden switch on it and again it's one of those things where it's like okay well obviously there was the whole you know founders thing you can buy to get in early blah 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 this and that and the other but i kind of wonder if they aren't like weren't like make taking clues from star citizen and just like screw it we'll just break the game up into pieces and <laughs> it's working for them. Yeah, because well, they're, they're Star Citizen's PR train is so good. <laughs> I was about to say, it worked for EverQuest Next, too. They've already broken that game up, so. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for DCO to be broken up now on Planet Side 2. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Just, I don't know. Such a weird decision. Uh, and I got to think it's, I, and I made this point on the Free to Play Police episode, and I think it has everything to do with consoles everything to do with consoles so many people play battle royale that's the piece they want to get out on consoles you can't do an early access type thing on consoles let's fix battle royale pump it out as its own game this summer and yeah we're gonna leave the survival portion in early access throughout 2016 which will put that game the survival portion of that game in early access jason for two years well minimum to DC, that's nothing minimum <laughs> But Daisy was. Are you talking about standalone? Yeah, standalone. Okay, I was gonna say because Daisy, you can't you know, mod and all Not that. The mod, sure. Okay. But Daisy standalone. had to wait because he had to go climb a mountain. Oh, okay. <laughs> now he's just gone. So. <laughs> all right. Before we move on to the weekly bombs here, real quick, we talk an awful lot about who does free to play right occasionally on this show depending on uh, the topic we're discussing and we've of course mentioned Path of Exile and with Grinding Gear Games and a few other companies we used to talk about Try On Worlds at least on their own self-published things in that topic not anymore uh, but we used to uh, so I really wanted quickly and by by no means is this an MMO bomb official stance of course everything given on the free to play cast is our own opinions individually not even as a group. Uh, but I want to be blunt real quick for a minute and ask you what free to play publisher uh, or even publisher slash developer can you just absolutely not stand the way they do free to play, Jason? I, I was thinking of a couple of companies, but, I, but then I was like, you know, I actually still play their games. Like, I like Planet Side 2, so I don't want really to talk about Daybreak. I still play Lord of the Rings online. Even hey, you can enjoy their Earth. games and just hate the way they do free to play. No, well, but then I thought, you know, why don't I go with a game that I actually don't play because I, I don't like how they do their free to play and what I look at, and that would be Perfect World for me. Because I mean, I, I looked at some, I played Star Trek Online, I have played Neverwinter, and I just don't want to go back in because I'm going to get inundated with all the lockbox crap that they're going to spew at me all the time because they rely so heavily on those for their income and, and advertise it in the game. Oh, someone opened a box and got this cool thing. It's just like, I just don't want to deal with it. Just stop. Just make so, me not want it. For you is Perfect World Entertainment. Q? Oh, God. I don't... <sighs> so here's the thing, right? I remember... And, and it's kind of funny anyway because I don't play the game because I really, really do not care about Star Wars. I really don't. Um, I, it's one of those things where it's okay to watch or whatever, but I generally don't care about the Star Wars universe. But I remember being really angry about their free-to-play conversion. And, uh, you know, like, it, it still just sticks with me as, like, one of the worst conversions that anybody did. Of course, it might have been because they were doing it around the same time that Tryon did the good free-to-play conversion <laughs> that they did on Rift before they went to doing, you know, what they're doing now. Um... It, the, the perfect world has never really bothered me, and it may be just the entire mental idea of, well, it's an Asian-made game versus a Western game. So I expect it to be more that way. Not perfect world the game, but I mean stuff like Star Trek Online and never. Oh, well, World. yeah, uh, I get, but I mean, publisher. anything that has perfect world on it, I just kind of expect. I, <laughs> you just expect it to suck. I, I just expect it, and I just kind of give it a pass. Yeah, so Jason's was not Perfect World International, the game. It was Perfect yeah. World Entertainment, the entity. Right. You're giving it to EA slash Bioware. I yeah. give you know, most of the bad things to EA, and that, that probably works. <laughs> like a reflex at this point. I, it's EA. I got to give it to Nexon for me. Like, as soon as I see the name Nexon, and, and Area Games is right there next to Nexon in my mind. As soon as I see those names, I immediately go, ah, shit. 
But I do have to be fair and give a little bit of credit where credit is due. Nexon has been doing some decent things in recent cash shops, and I hope that that continues, but they've just had a long history of it that right now I still see their name and I'm just like, ah, damn it. Nexon got it. Uh, and Area Games is right behind them for me. <laughs> right behind them for me. So let us know what you guys and gals think. Put your comments below on MMOBomb.com or on YouTube. Let us know what uh, free-to-play company or de developer slash publisher just isn't doing free-to-play right in your book and hasn't for a while. You know ours? Give us yours. Let's head over to the Weekly Bomb. Ladies first, Q. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to Daybreak all the way around at this point. Just all the way around. I think the last cool thing they did was save that kitten from the car. <laughs> Jason. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to Star Wars The Old Republic for being free asterisk to play, which they put in one of their uh, promotional things for the, the next chapter in the Knights of the Fallen Empire. It's like, because they're going to the asterisk down below. It says, you know, you must have internet connection and subscription or whatever for this for the for the uh, new for the next chapter to be free, that's what it was about. It's totally free if you have all this stuff and you pay money. It's like I I get that free in your stuff is a marketing tool. That's what it is in all the free to play games. But if you need a goddamn asterisk, <laughs> don't use the don't use the word. You know what? I wouldn't complain about the asterisk if it was just for the you need an internet connection. Sure, sure. Right. But if it's something where you need to spend money, you need to pay us money for this to be free. It's like, free to play. C footnote, res subscription <laughs> required. And, and Q just wrote up uh, the Star Wars piece, and, and I actually went in and took the asterisk out of that simply because I knew what, I knew what we were talking about. But what we linked in the article did not reference or have the free asterisks to play. So I was like, man, nobody's everybody's gonna think that's a typo on our side. So I gotta take that <laughs> I gotta take that out for now. Uh, I'm gonna give a dub bomb to fi Dust Five One Four closing. Yeah. 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 Game's go down. Go closing. Not because I want a game to close. I, of course, people enjoy the game and whatever, and not many, but people did. Uh, but because this was just so damn inevitable that I can't believe for a minute that nobody didn't see this coming, and I don't think anybody, even Dust514 players, were surprised by this. Uh, I'm actually amazed it took this long. Uh, from the viewers, Forteg says, Da bomb for your new free-to-play police series. Thank you. That's very kind. It's a great idea. Some things need to be said. By the way, although I love APB, if you do put it on that show, tear it up something fierce. A game deserves to be punished by its community for doing stupid things. Uh, A-bomb to Blade and Soul PvP, PvP players. Jesus, the salt is real. <laughs> uh, Fortegs, if you have something in particular that you uh, want us to take a look at in APB, because that's more what the, the show focuses on, particular items, choices, cash shop things, uh, then by all means, throw it in the comments. We'll be sure to take a look at it. Thank you for your compliment on the show. It means means the world to us. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, from Japan's Freak, it says, Gameplay, action, winning, putt, even though you wrote pot. That sounds like a completely different kind of game. <laughs> that sounds good. Do it. Game Any, anytime, Burn. Let's have a gameplay, anytime. action, winning, pot, man. <laughs> winning pot. <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Uh, Buggy, the part about APB is bull that will not do anything to their engines, seeing I already uh, been on the game today and there's no changes whatsoever. Stop advertising for G1 that are completely useless. Yeah, they hadn't made the changes we spoke about yet. In fact, Jason went out of his way to point out that those are changes that have been talked about forever. So Buggy's right on point with Jason. Yeah, sure. I don't think we were advertising. We were saying they hadn't done anything. We were just saying they, they weren't paying us. So yeah, was certainly weren't paying us. <laughs> if, if they were paying us, I was totally left out of that. How do you think Mike and I can avoid the, can afford the winning pot now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what the hell is going on? My dog is upstairs freaking out. Nobody's even home. Silas Bledsoe, kind of funny. I'm actually pay playing APB right now, and Jason is right. I'm nowhere near excited because they've been teasing this engine for about a year and a half now, so this is more of a relief than hype or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Great comment, Silas. Jason, go ahead. All right, this is from uh, Vocatool Paparulli. All right. Uh, again, this is the all APB bombs, apparently. APB Reloaded have potential, quote, 
The game is well thinked. Well thinked. Uh, the PvP is cool and decent. The problem is the pay-to-win system and the cheaters. Yeah, that's all. That's always what got me out of it. Sadly, APB Reload has made an Unreal Engine. Games made on this failed engine are vulnerable to cheats, and the combat system is not so good. The code has failed. Talking about Blizzard, it has a nice private game engine. Remember that Guild Wars 1 engine had parts from Blizzard coders? The game engine was made by coders who worked for Blizzard. The only problem I see on Blizzard is that the company is, all, is Satanist, and the Masons are using the company to poison the players with evil games for brainwashing the easy ones. Masonic company, Illuminati. What, what, suddenly we started talking about the secret world, apparently. <laughs> These are all separate groups, guys. <laughs> no, man, they're all controlled by everything. They're all separate groups. That shit escalated quickly. <laughs> like, I'm reading through the post, like, I oh, hate this, he likes Blizzard, Satanist, yada yada. Basically. Suddenly Illuminati. Illuminati. <laughs> wow. That got out of control fast. <laughs> I'm amazed by that. Grim's Bane, this A-bomb... Go- Holy shit. <laughs> this A-bomb goes out to the ever-failing Tryon worlds. Their first mistake, putting gear behind a paywall, but apparently in Tryon's market, there should be a saying, but wait, there's more! Now, on February 10th, Tryon may just be taking rested XP and specific queuing for dungeons and warfronts from free-to-play. Yes, this means more features behind a paywall. That's why I'm giving try on this A-bomb, because if you didn't want free-to-play to have this, you should have done it at launch. Jason, Q, that was the point the three of us made when we broke into that two weeks ago. Then again, if Tryon actually read their forums, or these forums, whichever Google wants to autocorrect that to, mm-hmm. uh, right now they would know the patrons are not happy that their non-patron friends are losing some features, and that is the biggest one that Jason and I did not like, was literally them putting in there that some systems were now going to be locked behind patron status, and uh, they did it in uh, in Trove too. Not good stuff. You don't you don't gate your stuff behind a paywall. You can make it slower to advance, but you gotta let people play with their friends. Particularly the stuff that was already there. Yeah. It's not yeah. like you added a new wardrobe system and said, "Hey, we're only gonna give this to our subscribers." Question of the week last week. We started a new show last week called Free to Play Police. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. What item in a cash shop or feature in a free to play game do you think needs to be investigated by the Free to Play Police next? And then, of course, while I was putting these together, H1Z1 blew up, so we had to cover that real quick. But Deathlock says for the question of the week, free to play shooters that put high powered weapons in the cash shop, making competition really a one sided game. Games like Zombies, Monsters, Robots, and Ghost Recon Phantoms does that, and it's sad, really, because they're both really cool third-person shooters. And yeah, I do hate keys being in cash shops for lockboxes that you can get for free. That seems to be the new thing now with MMOs. Not that new. Uh, I have literally hundreds of lockboxes in Neverwinter that I will never use just because there's no way in hell I'll pay money to open something that I actually got for free. I just want to summon Anima from Final Fantasy X and have them attack those asshole companies who intentionally make their games pay to win. Wow, that escalated quickly, too. What is up with our, our viewers this week? We're just inciting all the rage. The Damn. Right now. Go ahead, Q. Oh, God, you would give me the one with all the consonants in it. <laughs> it's, it's Proximities HD. Uh, anyway, Proximities HD, please just police the whole Snail Games Age of Wushu. It needs it badly. I, I, and Jason couldn't agree more, I bet. <laughs> I, I, have, I have not even thought about that game in, like, a year. Oh, yeah, right. You play it every Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's when you and your mom catch up and have your little family game night. Go ahead, Jason. This got weird. <laughs> Uh, Mega17 says, for the free-to-play police, please have a look at Guild Wars 2's shared inventory slot. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this either. Uh, that's why I gave this one to you, I want, because they want to hear uh, your opinion on it at the end. It was introduced recently. I see a fair amount of grumbling over the price of 700 gems and bundle price of 5 for 2,800 gems, despite the constant high demand for such a feature over the years. Taking into account the price of bank tabs, 600 gems, two-week banker golems, 500 gems, and the rarity of the permanent bank access contract, a permanent bank access item not available for cash shop purchase, the auction house value of which is equal to over 20,000 gems. I think 705 for 2,800 is a bargain. If you only played a handful of MMOs to the extent of spending money through, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, especially Jason's. Yeah, when I saw the shared inventory slots, I thought it was going to be, oh, I could put like a, I could put a bag in there. I could put a bag in my slot and I'll have, you know, 10, 20, whatever slots. I'm like, okay, that's something I could spend on. Paying 700 gems for a single slot for one thing 
It's like, no, I'm not spending, that's like, that's almost $10, $10 for 800 gems. I'm not spending $10 or like, whatever it would be like, $35 for five slots. Just, no. I didn't think you'd like it. Question of the week. Go ahead. I was just going to make it a bag and I'd consider it, but yeah. Question of the week this week. Got to ask it based on the H1Z1. Will there be an EverQuest next? And if you think there will be, will it be free to play now? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Why or why not as far as that game existing and if it'll be free to play. Make sure you leave any of your feedback there. Your weekly bombs, dub bomb for something good, a bomb for something bad in the world of gaming. Or hell, if you just want to vent about New World Orders, apparently uh, the free to play cast is the, the place to go ahead and do that. Uh, Q, until next week, where can everybody find you? Uh, Twitter or at Quintlin or hanging out in the secret world actually fighting the New World Orders. Uh, you, <laughs> you damn dragon, you. She's Jason. Dragon, yeah. Jason. Yeah, uh, find me on the Twitter at Winter Informal and just and Mo Bomb and stuff and whatever. <laughs> and stuff what and whatever. This? I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me on Twitter at Magic Man 1, M A G I C K M A N N 1, right on the bottom of the screen. Or come on over to MMOBomb.com. We just put up a new giveaway today. Got a couple new articles, new videos, new shows galore. Make sure you come check it out. Throw your comments in there. Give us some love and hang out. Let us know what you think. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers.